So what are we supposed to do about it, right? So, okay, Bowie, iron, clearly not good out of context, right? We definitely need, we definitely need to keep iron in its place. How do we get a better idea, if not serum ferritin, of what our iron status is? So these are four of the most common ones. We'll talk, we'll, you know, we'll circle back and there's, there's a couple others as well. Um, but these are, these are four of the most direct and give a better picture than just the serum ferritin or serum iron. So they are non-transferrin bound iron, which we just mentioned, NTBI, total iron binding capacity or TIBC, ceruloplasmin, which is a, an enzyme that aids in the movement of iron, the safe movement of iron, and then percent transferrin saturation. So NTBI is the term used for the free iron present in plasma. Okay, so this is the circulating iron that is not bound to transferrin, including all the forms of iron present in serum or plasma, which are not bound to TF. TF is transferrin, not bound to transferrin and other traditional iron binding proteins like heme, apoferritin, and hemosiderin, which are just other... Um, other molecules that bind and neutralize iron in transit. So NTBI is all of the free iron in our serum plasma, which has the potential to be very dangerous because it is not attached to something to neutralize it. Okay. The more NTBI, the worse off your health. TIBC, total iron binding capacity. Iron binding capacity is the capacity of transferrin to bind with iron, right? How ready, you know, how many empty and available taxis do we have to move iron throughout the body, right? Iron binding capacity is, is of two types, total iron binding capacity and unsaturated iron binding capacity or UIBC. Now, when iron stores are depleted, transferrin levels increase, right? We talked about taxis in the city. When, you know, we've got a lot, you know, we've got people out in the, in the city and you see a lot of taxis moving around, that means the body's like ready to move iron. As only one third of transferrin is saturated with iron in a healthy cell, right? We, we, the typical healthy accepted levels of transferrin saturation is somewhere between 20 and 35%. So if it's 20 to 35%, that means 80 to 65% is what we want to be unsaturated. So total iron binding capacity is the total of iron that is bound to transferrin, which we talked about earlier is serum iron, and how much transferrin is not bound to iron, right? So what's our occupied transferrin level and what's our unoccupied transferrin level? So the higher your total iron binding capacity, the better off your health. If you don't have a lot of tools to bind iron, that means there's going to be more unbound iron the NTBI, and that's not what we want. And then ceruloplasmin, which is just fun to say. Um, it's a peroxidase enzyme, which means it's oxidizing iron, that in humans is the major copper-dependent iron neutralizing protein in blood, and thus plays a role in iron metabolism. So ceruloplasmin is very closely tied with your body's copper load, okay? I forget exactly how many molecules of copper is necessary for ceruloplasmin to act, but you need, you need a good amount of copper for ceruloplasmin to do its job. Its job is to transport iron safely throughout the body as well. Okay, it plays a major role in iron recycling. So if you have low ceruloplasmin levels, you can indirectly infer that you have iron that is not being recycled properly, right? And then percent 
transferrin saturation is the value of serum iron divided by the total iron binding capacity of the available transferrin. So this is, this is how much of the total transferrin that you have available, how much of it is bound to iron. I mentioned before the ideal value is somewhere between 20 and 35%, right? So you want about a th like a fifth to a third of your transferrin bound, which allows for adequate space, the, you know, the remaining 80 to 65% to be able to act on any influx of iron to prevent any unnecessarily unbound iron. So let's take a look at the healthy baseline levels. So normal serum iron levels, this is the iron bound transparent, about 20 micromolar. Transparent saturation, like I mentioned, about 20 to 35%. Typical levels of NTBI, that's the, that's the bad iron. That's the iron that we want bound. If we have too much NTBI, that means it's out wreaking havoc. We don't want it to exceed one micromolar. And that paper talking about the, the cancer and stem cell transplantation in NTBI, they were anywhere between 1 and 10 micromolar. Not good. Ceruloplasmin, anywhere from 18 to 36 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, TIBC, so total iron binding capacity, anywhere from 250 to 425 micrograms per deciliter. Now, 250 to 425 the higher that number, the better. We want our iron binding capacity to be high. That means we have the ability to neutralize any free iron. So the, paper, or the, the blood test that I have used as my gold standard for my iron status is something called the full Monty blood panel. This is something you're going to have to ask for on special request to your doctor. They are not going to volunteer this. I myself don't even go through my doctor. I order it independently and pay for it on my own. It is worth it, in my humble opinion. Um, so this measures all things related to iron, your hemoglobin, your total iron, your total iron binding capacity, your percent transferrin saturation, your ferritin levels, your transferrin uh, levels, as well as your ceruloplasmin levels. You get all of that information. Very good. It helps to work alongside a practitioner familiar with these levels, which your doctor probably isn't. Um, there are other alternative health practitioners that can help you kind of piece those, piece those puzzle pieces together. One thing the Full Monty Blood Panel also does is the supporting minerals, helping with iron recycling. Those are your magnesium levels, your copper levels, your vitamin A, zinc, and vitamin D levels. Everything listed there, magnesium through vitamin D, all play a very important role in iron recycling. Okay, Magnesium affects your... Well, magnesium, vitamin A, vitamin D, all of them essentially are directly tied to erythropiasis, which is the generation of blood cells, which is one of the main uses of iron, main sites of iron incorporation back into circulation by the body. If any one of these is off, that means there's an inefficiency, an imbalance, something not going right where iron is being incorporated. So if any of those on the right-hand side are off, that means there may be cause for something to accumulate improperly in the iron department. 